Today on Beers TV, we're going to talk ozone in the aquarium. Hi, I'm Ryan, your host of Beerus TV, where each week we cover a new topic related to reefing. This week we're going to explore ozone. We'll cover what ozone is, what it does in the aquarium, what it won't do, some significant health and safety concerns, how most reefers implement ozone in the aquarium, the relationship between ozone and ORP, air dryers, and finish with alternatives to ozone. Typical oxygen is two oxygen atoms where ozone is three. This third oxygen atom more or less desperately wants to free itself and when it does, it'll have an oxidizing effect on the molecule it reacts with. For use with the aquarium, ozone is most commonly generated using a corona discharge ozone generator, which uses an electrical charge to split the oxygen molecules into separate oxygen atoms where some of them reassemble themselves into ozone. There are a few main reasons why a reefer might want to use ozone in the aquarium. Biggest one is water clarity. Ozone will oxidize the organic material in the tank, which can cloud or color the water. Ozone is very effective at oxidizing the yellow pigments common in reef aquariums. These yellow pigments often make the tank look dirty, corals less attractive, and reduce light penetration. Because it happens slowly, you might not notice how dirty and yellow your tank's water really is. Easiest way to identify this is to find a white container which is about the same depth as your tank. A five gallon bucket is perfect for this. Fresh salt water will be a pristine blue rather than yellow like this old salt water. Properly implemented ozone will not only keep your tank pristine, it can even take old yellow water like this and return it to the same color and clarity as freshly mixed salt water. We ran a test on some old water taken from a tank prior to a water change and it reduced the PAR by close to 25%. So these pigments can have a significant impact on light penetration. This is pretty undesirable because our corals typically don't respond well to large changes in light intensity. Not to mention we spent a fortune on our lighting options just to have it impacted negatively this way. Another common reason to use ozone in the aquarium is the destruction of organic toxins emitted by corals and other organisms in our tanks. Many corals protect their turf in the wild by emitting toxins to keep other organisms away. In the ocean, these toxins quickly dissipate. However, in the aquarium, they more or less just build up and could easily begin to irritate other organisms in the tank. It may even cause them to respond by emitting their own toxins. It is commonly believed that the use of ozone will oxidize and alter these toxins into much less harmful compounds. Another thing ozone does a good job of is removing odors related to the tank. Each tank is different, but I've absolutely been around some tanks that have some sea-based odors like seafood or algae smells. Ozone will solve these issues. There are a whole slew of other perceived or anecdotal benefits associated with ozone like reducing or removal of pest algae, cyano, reduced nitrate, and improving skimmer production. There are some theories and a whole lot of anecdotal experiences that would support these claims, but an equal amount that would say otherwise. For example, my personal experience is ozone almost always reduces skimmer performance. For the most part, I would ignore these claims when considering ozone, and if they do have that effect, just consider it a bonus. There's one thing it won't do, and that's sterilize the water and effectively remove pathogenic bacteria. UV and ozone often get grouped together in the same conversation, even though they shouldn't be. We often get asked questions in relation to both as to which one they should select, UV or ozone, even though they have almost nothing in common in the aquarium. This is probably because in the drinking water industry, both ozone and UV are used to sterilize water, but that's with concentrations and contact times with ozone that we would never see in the aquarium. It might also be grouped together because one method of creating ozone is with UV light, but it's much more common to use corona discharge ozone generators. Either way, there's no reason to believe ozone is going to serve as an effective sterilizing tool in the aquarium. Okay, so we know what ozone likely can and can't do in the aquarium. It's time to talk about the primary reason why it's not more commonly used, which is your personal and tank safety. I'm not a health expert, but it's commonly believed that ozone is bad for your health. Most people counter this by using some activated carbon to remove the ozone from the air and water, but it's not easy to know if you've done this effectively in ways that it might reduce it to safe levels. If you're considering running ozone, I would recommend doing some of your own research on the topic and making your own decision. Same could be said for the tank. While I've personally never seen anything but positive results from adding ozone to a reef tank, in theory it can produce some ozone-produced oxidants which could be harmful to the tank's inhabitants. Again, I would do some additional research and make your own decision. 
The most common method for introducing ozone to your system is with a protein skimmer. Many skimmers even have a specialized port on it just for injecting ozone from an ozone generator. More or less the pump sucks the ozone in and whisks the freshly generated ozone and tank water together to create the desired reactions. Many people will say the right amount of ozone, which is typically a small amount, will get you increased skimmer performance. However, it's been my experience that used this way, skimmer performance almost completely shuts down. Ozone is also tough on various plastics. Even if the type of plastic used is ozone resistant, the ozone is still going to affect it somewhat over time. So I'd be somewhat hesitant to use it on any skimmer that doesn't explicitly state that it's ozone safe and has proper ports. There's some ozone reactors out there that use a slightly pressurized chamber with lots of surface area, which is a more sophisticated way of using ozone. A high quality version of these can be hard to find, sometimes harder to operate, and personally I haven't found them to be more effective at incorporating ozone into your system than a skimmer. For that reason, it's always been my personal preference to run a second skimmer, which is just for the ozone reaction and not designed to be used as a skimmer at all. I personally pick something pretty inexpensive. This also allows you to modify the skimmer to allow the air to pass through a large volume of carbon and remove the ozone. Again, it's hard to know how effective this is, but one thing you can be sure of, if you can smell the ozone, which smells a lot like a thunderstorm, then it's not effective enough for sure. I've also found the carbon to be much less effective at removing ozone from the air when it's wet, so it's best to make sure the carbon stays dry. Most people also put carbon on the water output of the skimmer. Ozone itself will only last a few seconds in seawater, but it may create some ozone-produced oxidants you might want to attempt to remove with carbon. Almost everyone who implements ozone will do so in conjunction with an ORP controller. ORP measures the oxidation reduction potential of the water. There's some debate around this, but most reefers believe that higher ORP levels have a direct correlation to higher quality, cleaner water. Either way, it's used to make sure we don't add toxic levels of ozone to the tank. Setting the ORP controller to turn the ozone generator off if the ORP ever gets over 375 is pretty common. Another thing you can do is adjust the amount of ozone the generator emits so it naturally doesn't go over 375 as well. It is preferred to run your generator like this rather than have it on full blast and constantly turning on and off. A consistent, stable volume of ozone where the generator is almost always on is much more desirable than large, periodic volumes of ozone. Most ozone generators also require dry air to operate efficiently. If the ozone generator is in a fairly dry location and certainly not inside the stand, it might be okay to run without an air dryer. Using dry air will prolong the lifespan of the ozone generator and increase the volume of ozone the generator emits. Air dryers come in a variety of forms, with the most common being a simple chamber filled with a desiccant, which absorbs moisture from the air. Once it's depleted, it will turn from blue to pink, and you can simply bake it in the oven for a few hours to remove the moisture and use it again. For the equipment junkies out there that are serious about using ozone and using it long term, there are automatic dryers as well. The Ozotech IQ20 has a single cartridge which is automatically heated and dried so you don't have to do anything. The IQ40 is the ideal option. It has two cartridges where one is always drying while the other is used to dry your air for the ozone generator. At this point you can probably see the benefits and attraction to ozone, but you can also see exactly why the dangers, complications, and expense make it a somewhat uncommon addition to the average reef tank. One of the things that make it uncommon is almost all of the benefits associated with ozone can also be achieved with a few dollars of activated carbon in an efficient reactor. Activated carbon is also very effective at removing color pigments, odors, coral toxins, and increasing the clarity of the aquarium without all the dangers or complications and expense. One of the big differences is ozone will tend to keep the water consistently pristine and stable, where carbon will tend to ebb and flow a bit as the carbon gets depleted and replaced. So if you're trying to get the same benefits of ozone, you'll have to change the carbon out a bit more frequently. One last tip on the carbons used to remove ozone from the air and water, stay away from pelletized carbon. Pelletized carbon has been powdered then extruded into pellets with a special binder. Ozone can degrade the binder and release the powdered carbon into the tank. If you have any questions for us or the community, check out the comments area down below. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button because we release two new reefing videos every week. See you next week with another episode of BRS TV.